Hi, another day, another repaint video, another rare craft idea. So I said Macha was the last team and, and I'll stick to that statement. This is more of a fairy team and she looks way too cute to be evil. This is also the most expensive doll I've made. I finished it, didn't like it, remade and changed the concept, bought tumblers and bubble tea glass straws and syringes and a lot of resin, so maybe she is a bit low-key evil. Or just cursed. Ooh, I should make a Ouija board doll. But never mind, let's get back to this cutie. I'm not complaining, I learned a lot about crafting and handling strong emotions. But you know what, all is well that ends well. And here we are, a baby team and fairy. The illustration is done, so let's dive into this. I ended up using the semi-broken glass, not broken enough, so let's fix that and enjoy the sound. Next I glued them together loosely. The pieces were incredibly sharp, so I should have worn gloves, but I didn't. Don't do this at home, for real, the sides could have sliced my hand like butter. But they didn't! The last piece was added, and voila! I scraped off excess glue with my X-Acto knife on the outside, but I used this cuticle torture tool for the inside. Then I painted the seams gold, not the same as with porcelain, but yeah, it looks kinda cool. I painted the cracks on the inside with Liquitex gloss varnish to prevent leaking. I have yet to have any of my demons leaking resin, so yeah, I hope this one won't. Kintsugi finished. This is the sacrifice of the day. What's up with the glasses though? It's weird. It's a fully jointed doll, even though it's so small, which was cool. I'm a happy camper when they have elbow joints. The head was easily removable, the hair was sparsely rooted, and everything was a piece of cake when prepping the doll. My favorite part of the doll is the inset eyes though. I made an incision, took out the rest of the hair, then went in with the blunt end of the X-Acto knife and yeah, I kind of just pushed them out. Like that. The, this hobby is not for the weak. I tried out these eyes and thought they looked great, and uh, changed my mind later on, we will get back to that, but for now let's enjoy her following the camera with her eyes. Then I removed her face up with acetone, but she had permanent markings, oh well, you know what, let's just work with that. Time for the face up! I used a q-tip for the lips, I, I like using just pastels, it looks so soft. Then I worked on blushing and creating a base for her eyebrows, trying to make it even. Some red on her cheeks and forehead, then finally she got some freckles using pastels and water. The base is there, now I'm going in with more details. First I contoured the nose slightly, adding blue at the sides and on her temples, then a little bit of yellow on her forehead. Some more freckles, then I sprayed with MSE in humid weather, and yeah, this is what happens. It becomes really shiny, so I finished the face up with acrylics and airbrushed it with Liquitex matte varnish. You'll see the difference. I removed the sealant from the eyes by scraping it off gently, and I'll definitely use these kinds of eyes in the future. I love how they follow you. And then I super glued lashes. In the end I also changed these into another pair, but yeah, you get the idea. Then I glossed her nose and lips with Tamiya gloss varnish. And there we have it, I'm in love with her face up, especially the freckles. Next I blushed and painted the hands to match the face using red, blue and yellow pastels. Oh, and more freckles, and here is the professional finger tap. I'm blushing between the fingers to make them look less like one piece, then I added iridescent foil pieces on the hands and the face, just for the sparkles. If we're going fairy teaming, I'm going all out. Please, let's never ever talk about the weird neck peg, I'm not saying anything more than that, let's just not mention it. Here I'm making a pattern that I used to create a dress, then I added hair and everything and thought I was done and she looked like this, and nope, 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 it uh, seldom happens that I strongly dislike what I make. So I removed the hair and clothes and the only thing I did keep was the face up. I had to cut the scalp to remove the eyes from the inside, otherwise the face up would have cracked, so I made some incisions and pressed them out. Then I printed these cool eyes, sealed them with gloss varnish and added glitter. I told you there would be more glitter glue in the future, and yeah, here we are. Then I added a blob of gloss varnish and a glass cabochon. After drying for a couple of hours, I cut them out and put them in the doll's head. Or well, in the eye sockets. Then I glued the scalp back on. 
And things are getting back to normal, she's got her team and eyes and this was my workspace at this time. It was really really bad and I'm not a fan of this kind of chaos. So yeah, I cleaned up before I went back to crafting, this time making hair out of yarn. I spin the yarn around the piece of cardboard and then cut it, then I tie it to a wire hanger, then I brush it out, starting from the bottom and working my way upward. Next is flattening it, then gluing it and I use a cutting board underneath. Feeling this off is so satisfying. I cut the excess off and then used my home built doll hair curling thing. It works so well with yarn wefts. I put a piece on one end with a paper clip, curl it around and seal it with a flattening iron, then switch sides and do the same thing. Then take the first one that has cooled down and continue for a couple of hours. There are arrows on which way to curl it, so I get equal amounts on each side. Then I glue the wefts onto the head, ensuring the curls turn away from the face. So there we go, and uh, yeah, much better than before. Since she looks so cute, I decided to give her a pair of sheep-like horns. First I use a wire that I bend into shape, then I add a layer of hot glue to make it more stable. Then I sculpt with my epoxy sculpt and add a bit of texture to them using a q-tip and a toothpick. Highly professional tools, very versatile. After 24 hours I pull them off, sand them a bit and paint them white. She needed some more sparkles, so I cut tiny pieces of iridescent foil and mixed them with gloss varnish, then I painted the inside of the horns. It doesn't show from the front, but you know what, it's nice knowing it's there. Finally I gloss them with Liquitex gloss varnish. Done! And they look super cute! I hot glued them in place, which was a risk since I couldn't adjust the horn before gluing them permanently onto the head, but you know what, it worked out fine and this is what it looks like. Next I made soup out of tea and white fabric, dyeing it off-white. It's the perfect color for tea with milk in it, and yeah, I gather and glue the fabric like a skirt around the doll, adding a brown layer underneath. Here I'm taking off the masking tape that keep it together while drying, then I made sleeves out of this lace, using a pattern I made earlier. I glue it to the body and sew the sides. Sewing while having these nails was, uh, interesting, but I'm always up for a challenge, so, you know. After sewing them, I make the bodies out of fall leather and glue it on with super glue. Finally, I thought it looked empty, so I added a brown ribbon to the middle, gluing one side to make it fold downward. It, it would have just poked her face otherwise. As a color, I glued a piece of my absolute favorite lace. It's so intricate and so cute. And then I added two little purple flatback beads. And this is what we've got now. I took her legs off at one point, but I didn't record it because it looked weird. Here I'm adding a little butterfly with a charm from an old earring and it, it kind of looks like real pearls. Maybe this is super expensive? Oh well, let's get to the bubble tea. I bought these, which said they would include 100, but I got 11, so I decided to make my own bubble tea pearls. I hot glued them at the bottom to make a mold, then I mixed this. Sorry for the messy can. One can't pour from these and not spill, or, or maybe people can, I, I don't know. I can't. I mix it quickly because this cures rather fast and then I pour it and move it to a leveled surface for curing. This is the morning, the day after and hence the espresso and I demold the mold. Then I gently take out the glass balls. Time to make resin boba! I mix these equal parts to volume and add purple dye to them. I used 8 drops of the dye so yeah, don't let this one drop fool ya. And then mix 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 and pour. I made 8 batches, which took 9 days, since the resin needed 24 hours to cure. I woke up, ate breakfast, poured resin and I, I kind of liked my little morning routine. They look more purple in real life and they're going in resin tea anyway, they do look edible though. I bought a lot of weird stuff for this project, some of the things I never used and now I have a bunch of glass boba straws. I took one of the longer ones and used that. Poked it inside and positioned the doll using rubber bands. 
Now, a couple of days later, I feel really stupid because adding the doll after the resin would have been a lot easier. Unfortunately, my mind didn't brain and at least I got the density correct to use weight instead of volume. So let's be real about this project, it's a cursed one, every once in a while I have these projects where everything fails and it feels like a hurdle race where I fall on every single one. So yeah, anyway, these projects keep me humble, especially after a long streak of things turning out the way I want them to. So there's that. I poured half of the resin, mixed the rest with white and poured it in. I always have milk in my tea, so why not? Unfortunately, this changed the resin's properties and a huge bubble formed. Do I throw it away? No. Do I throw a mini tantrum? Yeah. I dyed some coffee filters with instant coffee, oh the irony, then I cut out flower shapes, twirled the leaves to make them 3D and glue them onto the glass. To make them stick better, I sand the glass where they're going. I made many of these and I had a jolly good time making them. They looked super boring though, so I painted with some color paints. First on the edges of the leaves, then I just splattered some of it to make it more dynamic. It looked cool, but still kind of brown, so I added some squiggly wires. Glue those in place, then they got some purple flat back beads in the middle. Instead of gluing my logo at the bottom, I hung it around the foot, then I made some butterflies. I first made some purple resin, but they weren't the right purple, too saturated and plastic toy looking. I made a second pair of green ones. And here you see what I mean. The green ones were still too saturated, but I saved them by painting them with pale gold clear paint. I used a lot of water so it gathered in the grooves, which worked out well. Then I glued it onto the flower arrangements. I debated adding one to the doll, but I couldn't make it work. It just looked looked really random, like they didn't belong there, so yeah, they live among the flowers instead. So that was that, a bubble teeman fairy creation, and I am taking a break from making beverage inspired dolls. This one totally burned me. I'd love to make another take on my tea doll. It's uh, fun to redo a concept and compare it to an earlier one. I, I do that to my illustrations sometimes to remind myself that practice makes maybe not perfect, but progress. And progress is what I'm after. And yeah, next is the start of a mini series, an idea I stole from a comment. It's a small but time consuming project, and I hope you will like it. But for now this is what I started with and this is the result. She's uh, I guess more of a sculpture than a doll but I like her. It's a cute mold that I'd like to work with another time maybe making it scarier. Anyway thank you so much for watching the process and have a nice day until next time. Bye!